Do you know that a recruiter spends less than 10 seconds viewing your resume? In those 10 seconds, he decides whether or not to select you or to select any other candidate. So you have to make your resume in such a way that you capture the attention of the recruiter in those 10 seconds and you get selected. Today, I will share with you my entire resume that helped me get into Microsoft and helped me bag interviews in these companies. I will also share with you the important tips and tricks that I followed in order to make my resume stand out among the crowd. Hi guys, I am Somaranjan Mohanty, a software engineer and let's get on with it. So I'll briefly speak about my resume journey. So initially when I was in my second year, I had my resumes which was three pages long. Yeah. So you should not do that mistake ever. So never make your resumes more than one page. Even Elon Musk can make his resume to a single page. So why can't we? So students generally think that uh, the more the number of pages, you'll see more and more credible, right? So that is what I exactly used to think when I was in my second year. And that's why my resume was, um, you know, three pages long. So I'll just show you my three page resume. So you can see I had put a lot of projects which took up a lot of space, unnecessary descriptions of uh, things that are not required. And that's why my resume was, you know, three pages. Then I came to know that our resume should be of a single page. So what I did is I uh, created my resume. So you can see on the screen, uh, I created a resume which had two columns basically. So one column contained my education, uh, some links, achievements, skills, and the other column uh, contained my experience, my projects and the volunteer experience. But uh, this, I used this resume for some time, but I came to know that this resume was not ATS friendly. So what is ATS? I'll just give you a brief and you can read about it online. So it is basically stands for application tracking system. So basically uh, for big tech companies, for large companies, there are a lot of applications flowing in every day. So a recruiter cannot sit and go through each of the resumes, right? So what they have is they have bots, which will initially filter out resumes, right? So, um, so, so basically my resume was not ATS friendly. So you can say that bots were even rejecting my resume. Then I settled upon a single pager resume, which is of a single column. And that is what I use to this day. Now I will share with you that resume. And this is the resume that helped me get into Microsoft and get me interview calls from many companies. So let's get into that. So let's go through these sections one by one. You can see this is a single pager resume and it has only one column. So let's focus on each of the sections one by one. You can see in the top section, I have my name written. So you can have your name written out. Then you can have the city. Below that, I have my mobile number, my email ID, my LinkedIn profile and my website. So these are the things, these are the basic requirements that you uh, should have in your header. Do not need to write your date of birth, your, you know, your full address or anything like that. I've also seen students putting their photos in the header section and I will not recommend that. So do not do that. Next, we'll come to the work experience section. I will suggest that if you have any kind of experience, be it an internship experience or a full-time experience, I will suggest that you put that above your education section. So we'll come across the education section later, but let's go into the work experience right now. Uh, so as you can see here, I put my uh, both of my full time experiences. I could have put my internship experiences, but then my resume would have been very long. So I did not put them. First, you have to put the company's name for which you are working, the date from which date to which date you are uh, employed in that organization, in which city or in which place you are uh, employed. And after that, you can write in simple bullet points what you did basically in that organization during your tenure. So what I will suggest is you use the formula accomplished X by doing Y. So you have to quantify your contribution. For example, if you look at my resume, so you can see that I have written here. I replaced it with native UI charts using high charts, which led to a 30% increase in the app performance. So you should use percentages, you should use numbers in order to quantify your contributions in the organization. So after the work experience, we come across the education section. So in the education section, um, I generally recommend people to not write their 10th and 12th uh, schools, right? So only write your bachelor's degree uh, from where you have got your bachelor's degree. So in my case, I have graduated from IIIT Bhubaneswar, we take in computer science. I generally recommend to mention your CGPA in the education section if you think they are worthy enough. If you think that your CGPA is very low and it is not fit to be mentioned, do not mention. You should also give the duration of your um, entire bachelor's degree or whatever degree you have done and the place where you have done that. Then comes the project section. I think this is one of the most important parts or most important sections of your resume. It becomes even more important if you do not have any work experience or any internship experience. So the only way a recruiter will come to know that you have experience or you have capability in certain technologies is through these projects. So as you can see, I've written the project's name. I've written the tech stack which, we, which I have used. For example, in Hashnode block to Twitter, I've written I've used Next.js, Serverless, Twitter API, Tailwind CSS. I've given the deployed link. So this is very important. So if you are developing a website, you should deploy it somewhere. There are various free places where you can deploy your website. So deploy that, give the link there. Or let's say if you have developed an Android application, if you have published it in the Play Store, well and good, you can give that link or you can give the link to the APK. After that, you can write in very small sentences in simple bullet points, what your application does and what is the problem it is trying to solve. I would recommend mentioning only two or three projects because mentioning any more than that will take a lot of space. Recruiters see resumes very often and they can easily know whether you have copy pasted your project from somewhere else. 
So what I would suggest is if let's say you are following a tutorial and you are uh, trying to do a project, try to do something that makes it unique, right? That that makes it your own. Try to change the color of the application or try, try to add some additional features that will make it your own. Another quick tip I will have is try to change the resumes based on the company that you are applying for. For example, if you are applying to company A, which is looking for a Node.js developer, try to have those projects which use Node.js in the technical stack. If you are applying for a position uh, which requires React knowledge, try to give the projects in which you have used React. And I will repeat it again, you should have the deployed link ready to go. So next I have an accomplishment section. So if you have any accomplishments or if you have any awards or certifications, you can basically mention those. They should be crisp and to the point. They should not be very long. They should be ideally a single liner. So for example, you can see I have written, I was the winner in this and this hackathon. I was the top 10 in this and this hackathon and so on. Then I have my profile links. So here I have given the clickable links to my lead code profile, my GitHub profile and my medium profile. So any place you're practicing problems or in any place you are posting your code or any place you are writing blogs, you can basically put that link. And the last section that I have is technical skills. Bear in mind, it should only contain technical skills, not extracurricular activities or co-curricular activities like dancing, reading books, etc, etc. No one cares about that. As you can see in my example, I have put certain languages that I know, C++, Java, JavaScript, HTML, CSS, etc. I have a separate section for technologies, frameworks and libraries like React, Node.js, etc. And I have data structure and algorithm mentioned in the other section. So you can use this format or any other format which suits you, but do not write anything else other than technical skills here. So this is my resume from top to bottom and I've shared everything each and every section with you. I've also created a template out of it and you can find the link to the template in the description below. Now that you have seen my resume that helped me get into Microsoft, I'll share with you 9 important tips and tricks that I personally followed and I would recommend you to follow. But before that, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel. This really motivates me. So now let's move into the 9 important tips and tricks that I personally follow. Tip number 1. The importance of spacing. Do not underestimate the importance of spacing in your resume. You should not give a lot of space between different sections so that your resume flows into multiple pages and you should not put all your sections one after another without any space. So you should make careful use of space. Tip number 2. Be brutal while deciding what to keep. Only keep those things which are the best according to you. Do not mention those projects which you think were mediocre and do not mention those skills which you think you do not know well. Tip number three, try to change your resume based on the job description. So different companies will have different job descriptions which will need different skills. Tip number four, delete shit no one asked for. For example, do not include your profile picture, do not include your date of birth, do not include your hobbies, no one cares. Next tip, use keywords. Keywords are very very important. Uh, they basically help recruiters and bots to understand what kind of skills and technologies you are aware of. So you might have used those skills in your work experience or in your projects or you can mention them in your skills section. So try to include those keywords from the job description which you already know. Tip number six is to use bold fonts sparingly. What do I mean by sparingly? That is do not use bold fonts everywhere for each of the words or each of the phrases. Only bold a certain word or phrase if you think it is important or it needs to be emphasized. Tip number seven. KISS. This is a principle that we use in software engineering and this is applicable here as well. Keep it simple stupid. So what I mean by that is do not use fancy colors, do not use fancy fonts. You can use a simple font like Times New Roman, Arial, Calibri etc. And always keep your resume black and white. Do not use the templates that are floating around on the internet which use different colors like pink, blue, green etc. Try to keep your resume professional and black and white is a good choice. Tip number 8. Try to name your resume as your name underscore resume dot pdf. In my case, it will be Somaranjan Mahanti underscore resume dot pdf. So why am I telling you to do this? Because let's say a recruiter sees your resume and wants to download it. It will go inside a downloads folder and it will be easier for her to find your resume among the pile of resumes that she had already downloaded. So keeping a unique identifier such as your name is very important. The last tip is the most important one which I'll encourage you to follow. Always host your resume in a public place somewhere. What do I mean by public place? For example, it can be Google Drive, Dropbox. I personally use Google Drive. So I use Google Drive to host my resume and I share the public link to anyone who asks me for my resume. You should do this because anytime you're asking for a referral or if you're giving a resume to a recruiter, they might not have the time or uh, they might not want to download your resume, right? So they can actually click on the link and they can view the entire resume on Google Drive and they can download it if they want. I have even gone one step further and what I have done is I've shortened the link, the Google Drive link and my resume link is link.somewhere.dev slash resume. So anytime anyone visits this link, 
they will be redirected to my google drive resume uh, so anytime i update my resume i make sure that this links points to that resume that is the updated resume so that every time one gets the updated resume so these are the nine tips that i would like you to follow while designing your resume the link to the resume template that i am currently using is in the description below you can go ahead and use that i'll give you a simple task once you've created a resume post it in google drive and paste the links in the comment section i will go through each one of them and i'll give comments on the replies so that's it for this video i hope this video helped you if you enjoyed this video please make sure to like this video and also subscribe to this channel i'll be bringing more such content related to software development technical interviews coding etc so meet in the next one bye